Charles Bobrinskoy of Aerial Investment. Charlie oversees $6 billion in assets, and his aerial focus fund ranks up in the top 20% this year. And you're normally cautiously optimistic, but we, we continue to have you on on down days. What's, what's going on uh, in this market today, Charlie? I mean, why are we coming down to lows we haven't seen since January? Because people had been more and more comfortable with the scenario of an improving economy, improving consumer confidence, not bad retail sales. So anything that makes that picture blurrier is going to be tough on the market. So unrest in the Middle East, earthquakes in Asia, those tend to make you a little bit less confident. What is your biggest concern right now? I mean, you've still got the European uh, sovereign debt concerns, unrest in the Middle East. You mentioned, and obviously we've just been talking about uh, not only the horrible tragedy that happened in Japan, but uh, serious problems that could ensue. From where you sit, what's the biggest problem right now for markets? Well, if there was a reversal in the expectations for a re uh, recovering economy. I mean, if we, you know, six months ago when you had me on on bad days, it was because people were worried about a double dip. The reason why the market is up more than 100 percent from the bottoms is because people have been less worried about that. If we go back into a scenario where people are focused on double dip, then an awful lot of bank stocks and consumer discretionary stocks are going to have a tough time. Let's bring in a trader right now to get his perspective. Michael Palmer is a volatility trader with Group One Trading. He's at the Chicago Board Options Exchange. Michael, what do you think uh, right now? Is Are those kind of concerns about a double dip increasing? I mean, is it, uh, is it more and more uncertain as to which direction this market's heading? You know, I, I, I think so. We, we've definitely seen the volatility trend continue into today. And, you know, in prior months, we've been worrying about housing numbers and unemployment. But recently, we have to start thinking about oil shocks. We have to start thinking about Fed policy, you know, Japanese liquidity, and, of course, this, you know, tragedy in Japan. So there's a lot of volatility on the horizon. There's no there's no reason to believe that it's going to slow down anytime soon. Well, and you've got uh, and Charlie, you've got you know the Fed coming to the end of its bond buying program here. I think in June. Uh, do you think that that's going to be a shock to the market as well? Is that just going to add to concerns? So we always want to compare what we think to what we think the market thinks, and we would say that the problems are all pretty well understood. Everybody knows that the Fed has been a tailwind. It's been adding liquidity. It's been helping. Everybody knows that the government's been running deficits, and that's been a tailwind, and that's been helping. So we think the problems are pretty well understood. It's when we get unrest in the Mideast and Japan having earthquakes that we get new factors, and that, I have to say, does cause us some concerns. Michael, what do you think? Is everything priced in here, or most everything priced in here, as Charlie's saying? Yeah, you know, we, we do have a lot of things priced in here, but the, the issue I think really is is that we're really looking to Fed language tomorrow to find out what we have coming down in a year from now as far as Fed policy goes. In the short term, everything's priced in, but looking a year, two years out, there's still so much uncertainty, nobody really knows what to make of it. All right, hey, Michael, thanks so much for joining us. Michael Palmer there. Thanks, and Charlie, always a pleasure. Charles Babrinskoy.